In the original Sonic the Hedgehog game, there was actually only six Chaos Emeralds, blue, green, yellow, red, and pink. Though by Sonic the Hedgehog 2, a seventh Chaos Emerald was added in. It was purple. And then in Sonic the Hedgehog 3, they actually replaced the pink emerald with a turquoise one. But then it gets even weirder because in Sonic the Fighters, there were eight Chaos Emeralds. But by games like Sonic R onwards, things went back to seven Chaos Emeralds and have stayed that way ever since. In Sonic Adventure 2, the only time you can play as Tails or Dr. Eggman outside of their mech is in the Chow Garden. But one thing that's really interesting is that Dr. Eggman is incredibly fast. Matter of fact, he might even be faster than Sonic himself. Sonic 06 was originally supposed to have a day and night cycle, though that ended up getting cut. And when it comes to the 3D Sonic games, we've noticed that human NPCs have taken a very interesting appearance over the years, changing in the way that they look across multiple games. Like in Sonic Adventure, they look like this, and in Sonic 06, they looked like this. But in Sonic Unleashed, they looked like this. It's pretty dramatic and a little bit cursed at times. In Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles, the Chaos Emeralds were actually upgraded to Super Emeralds and would allow characters like Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails to become Hyper Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails respectively. These Super Emeralds were never used again in any of the games until Sonic Mania, where you can see that they make an appearance. However, they're drained of their energy and power and are essentially destroyed or can no longer be used. But hey, it's at least a cool nod to something that once existed. And Super Tails, respectively. I think I might have said Hyper Tails, but he's specifically Super Tails, not Hyper. But that's not the only time we've gotten introduced to some unique type of emerald or stone that is super powerful in the Sonic universe. We also have the Soul Emeralds, which first made an appearance in Sonic Rush. Essentially, it's from some other universe. It's their version of the Chaos Emeralds, and they pretty much do the same thing, except they allow Blaze the Cat to turn into Burning Blaze the Cat. Outside of this big plot point, they don't really serve that much of a bigger role anywhere else in the universe. However, way later on, we would be introduced for the first time ever to Time Stones in the Sonic universe. Okay, to be fair, these originally showed up in Sonic the Hedgehog CD, but more recently made an appearance in Sonic Speed Simulator, which I didn't even know was an official Sonic game until recently. But yeah, it was a Sonic game made in Roblox, but apparently it's official. Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of wild to me. But hey, there was a lot of effort put into this thing, so I mean, it is an official Sonic game, I guess. Also, it still regularly gets updates and has a large cast of characters you can unlock. It's pretty impressive. During some early, early prototype screenshots for what would become Sonic Adventure during the game's development, you can actually see that in this specific screenshot, there are assets from Nights into Dreams reused for the backdrop for Sonic that would become Sonic Adventure 1. Matter of fact, the whole history behind Sonic Adventure 1 is pretty interesting. Development originally started all the way back on the Sega Saturn, though with the Dreamcast coming along, things would be shifted and pivoted around, where essentially all progress made on the Sonic game for the Sega Saturn would be stopped and development would start over for what would become Sonic Adventure 1. However, the Sega Saturn's original development would still see some sort of release as they did a collection game called Sonic Jam, which was like a re-release of the first three Sonic games, but it included a special bonus level called Sonic World, which essentially was the prototype version of where they were getting to with Sonic Adventure. And it was just kind of like one big level, but still it was something. It's probably for the better that the main first 3D experience of Sonic would be Sonic Adventure 1 rather than what this prototype was just because in the late 90s trying to compete with Mario 64 having this probably wouldn't have really done much for the Sonic franchise and Sonic Adventure was at least bigger in scope than this but from a historical standpoint it's really cool to take a look back at this. Even more interestingly enough the whole Sonic Adventure development ended up serving as a massive turning point for the Sonic franchise kind of dividing the lines between the retro games and the more modern Sonic we know today. There is this early screenshot that shows the more classic retro look of Sonic and Tails that was being built for Sonic Adventure, though they ended up doing a contest internally at Sega to design the new look for Sonic characters, or be the head of redesigning Sonic. Lead character designer Yuji Uakawa designed the new look for Sonic the Hedgehog and was inspired by Rock Rebellion and most specifically Graffiti. You can kind of see the style idea of Graffiti being interpreted in the design that these characters had especially during the Sonic Adventure time period. During this time, Dr. Robotnik or Dr. Eggman would also see a redesign to look a little more human-like. However, since this was a little bit later in the development for Sonic Adventure, you can still see the original Eggman assets used in the HUD and also commonly showing up in levels like Casinoopolis. Inspiration for some of the world and level designs that were featured in Sonic Adventure actually comes from a trip that Team Sonic ended up going on to South America. And you can see images on the screen now that they documented from that 
that trip that obviously served as some of the big design choices that were used in areas like Mystic Ruins. But this isn't the only time that a Sonic game has gone through various development and design changes and overhauls. If we want to look all the way back at the beginning of the franchise, we can see that Sonic originally was supposed to look more like this, which was quite a bit different than the Sonic the Hedgehog we ended up getting when the game actually came out. Now, as a lot of us know, Sonic the Hedgehog released in 1991, though the first time Sonic was ever shown off was at the Tokyo Toy Show in June of 1990. This was the first time the game could ever be played by the public, and Yuji Naka actually said that the Sonic team put together a small, playable demo specifically for this event with an early version of Green Hill Zone. But this was very early on in development. To this day, this build of Sonic is the rarest game ever, as this game would never surface online or be leaked or released in any capacity ever again after this 1990 event. Apparently, there was considerations that this would be included in the Sonic Mega Collection, which released on the GameCube in 2002, though allegedly Sega couldn't find the ROM that they had this early build on, and it's unlikely, unfortunately, that this build will ever be found. This isn't the only game to have a completely lost build. The Shadow the Hedgehog game from 2005 allegedly had a version of the game that had stronger language and more violence than the actual release of the game. There's actually some footage of a trailer that's a little more violent than the official trailer release and footage of an extended version of Maria dying. And the game was supposed to have some stuff like extra blood and allegedly Sonic even saying the word piss instead of tick. Though the same year that this T-rated Shadow the Hedgehog game would have released, ESRB added a new rating option called E10. And since that would appeal to a larger audience, Sega ended up trimming down some of the over-the-top stuff to get that E10 rating instead. When Shadow the Hedgehog was first set to be introduced in Sonic Adventure 2, his character actually looked like this in some of the earliest conceptual phases before the character was redesigned into what we know today. Also in Shadow the Hedgehog, while there's multiple different pathways you can go to finish the game, there's actually a total of 326 specific different routes you can take to complete the game, which is kind of a lot. In Sonic 06, you may notice that Silver moves very slowly, but originally in a demo shown of the game, it appeared that Silver would have moved a lot faster, more around the speed of Shadow in that game. Also, here's a fun Sonic 06 fact. Sonic 06 is sometimes kind of glitchy. When Sonic Adventure 1 first originally released, even with most characters getting a remodel, Tails still mostly resembles his older, blockier retro model. Though, the remakes and re-releases of the game, like the director's cut re-release of the game, would update Tails using the Sonic Adventure 2 models, along with all the other characters getting upgraded to their Sonic Adventure 2 models. So most players experience Tails looking quite a bit different than the original model. I think most players saw the newer version. Sonic Adventure, which released on the Dreamcast in 1999 in the US, was actually the first Sonic game to receive downloadable content, which is crazy to think about all the way back in literally the 90s. Most of it was just really basic holiday themed things like Halloween, Christmas. They even did something a little special for Y2K, which is fun. In North America, we got a tribute to Christmas nights and Japan had Christmas trees scattered through Station Square, which played Christmas music. There also was a little DLC celebrating the release of Samba de Amigo. There also was some Time Attack DLC contest that had AT&T involved and a little mini game or something. It's a little bit confusing to figure out how this all worked, but it still is cool that this even became a thing. Sonic Adventure 2 also had some downloadable content in the form of outfits or costumes for the characters to wear. Now in Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, you could unlock some costumes, but some were exclusive to the website or exclusive to the original Sonic Adventure 2 on the Dreamcast, not the Adventure 2 Battle versions that would re-release later. For instance, this little pumpkin mask was only available starting on October 11th, 2001 through the official website. And here were some other characters that had some cool website exclusive skins as well. Now, some of the other skins were also just available by unlocking things, but they differed between Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Adventure 2 Battles as the re-release. For instance, only in the original version of the game could you get this weird dominatrix outfit for Rouge the Bat? What? What is this? Okay, this obviously would never return in any game ever again. In the early stages of Sonic 06 development, this is what Silver the Hedgehog originally looked like when they were still trying to conceptualize this character before the version of the character we know today. Sonic 06's story is very confusing when it comes to its canon status in the universe. At the end of Sonic 06, they essentially undid everything that happened, making it so nobody would ever remember that anything happened and essentially it never would have happened anyways. That's fine and all, though just before that, Blaze the Cat had sacrificed herself and would remain dead across 
across all of the universes, that was final no matter what, apparently. Though in later games like Sonic Colors, there's commentary that Silver and Blaze work really well together, and Silver doesn't have any recollection of anything, but kind of alludes to the fact that it feels like they've paired up before, even though they never did. But then to make it even weirder, in Sonic Generations, Blaze will even comment on Crisis City, saying she never thought she'd be there again. How is Crisis City even in Sonic Generations if it never happened before? Like, I mean, I guess it did happen, but it didn't happen. It's also confusing because the Blaze the Cat in Sonic 06 isn't necessarily the same Blaze the Cat from Sonic Rush, because like, the Soul Emeralds have nothing to do with Sonic 06, and this version of Blaze is from the future, not an alternate timeline. Yeah, I don't know. But while we're at it, Blaze the Cat originally looked like this in the early conceptual phases for Sonic Rush. Over the years, we've seen Sonic the Hedgehog appear in a ton of crossover type things, whether it be games like Sonic and the Olympic Games, or something like a McDonald's or Burger King Happy Meal type situation where they have some toys. But internationally speaking, some of these commercials that they do to promote the Sonic characters can be incredibly cursed, like some of the most cursed and terrifying things we have ever seen. Here's an example. Dead Sucker! Sonic Skateboard! Shadow Basketball! Rogue and Emmy Dennis! Also, in Russia, there was this really interesting, like, Sonic the Hedgehog quiz show or something from the 90s. We we don't really know what this is. This video surfaced about eight years ago online and features fake captions, which are comedically hilarious, though it gives us even less context as to what the show is actually about. Nonetheless, still a very interesting watch if you're ever just interested in what on earth this thing is. But yeah, it's, it's still pretty great. In the Sonic Boom television show, many Sonic fans have pointed out that in one of the episodes, there is like this hardcore Sonic the Hedgehog fan who is like really, really cringy, and the episode's pretty cursed overall, but a lot of fans have speculated that this character is directly based on Sonichu, or Christine Chan, if you don't know the whole lore behind that, then, um, I don't know, go watch like the 80 part series that exists out there, because I, I can't go into that rabbit hole, that would be a little too traumatizing for this video. Still nonetheless, whether this is actually true or not, that they took a little jab here or there at something like this, which would be hilarious. Hilarious. It's still unknown. The team that's worked on the show have denied it, though it seems a little too on the nose to fully believe. But still, it, it's actually kind of a hilarious episode to watch. It's almost done. I just gotta finish the arms. Also, there's a very minuscule character known as Rocket the Sloth from like the old cartoon show. It, it's kind of funny. It's just a very minor background character, but since we run a separate YouTube channel on Halo stuff called Rocket Sloth, we always thought this fact was interesting. And now's our chance to bring it up. Ken Penders, one of the writers for the original Archie Sonic comic book series, once decided to tweet that the one story that he couldn't tell while he was working on the Sonic Archie comics was of Sally losing her virginity to Jeffrey and said that Sonic may be fast, but Jeffrey was faster on the draw in that department. And that kind of just left a lot of fans in the Sonic community like, what the hell, dude? I mean, besides the cringe in that alone, that's like some statutory level stuff there. I think it just gave a lot of the community a big ick feeling. Uh, there was already some really cringy storylines that Ken Penders was known for, and I think just this tweet really just exasperated his reputation even more. On the other hand, there's some real deep cringe in the Sonic community of someone who made a life-size Sally Acorn doll, I guess, and it was rumored to have like real human remains, which were debunked. I think they were like a fake skeleton that it was built around, but this is still so creepy and weird. I just, I think we're gonna just like leave all the cringe now behind and just move on to some more like palate cleanser type things. Just some fun facts for the rest of this video, or at least for the next few minutes. When I was a high schooler, my favorite band growing up was this small band called Cash Cash. They were in New Jersey and they played locally in Seattle one time and I really liked the band. They were still a really small band back then, though some of their music was kind of getting around. And when Sonic Colors released, Sega reached out to Cash Cash to have them do the main theme for Sonic Colors. And that's the music you hear at the beginning of Sonic Colors, which is really incredible. After Sonic Colors released, Cash Cash pivoted and ended up becoming more of like an EDM group and didn't perform in like a regular band type setting anymore where they had like instruments and live singing and whatnot. And now they're like super big and successful. However, Sega has done a lot of like musical performances with guest performers redoing a lot of the Sonic songs at different Sonic events over the years, and Cash Cash had never returned. They've done Sonic Colors tributes and whatnot, but not with Cash Cash at any of these events. However, way back in the day, like 2010, Sega did have 
Cash Cash do a very small spur of the moment show in Seattle's Gameworks. And since this was back when they still were a band, they did perform a little bit of Sonic live just very briefly. And this was the only time they ever did it. Fortunately, some people who were at this event did film it with their cell phones. And there's just like a little snippet of this still existing online. Remember how earlier on in this video, we talked about how Sonic had the Saturn version of the game, which ended up being Sonic World. Well, also during this time, Sonic R was being handed over, or at least a project Sonic related was handed over to Traveler's Tales to make a racing game. And they reused some of the assets that were originally made for the Sonic Saturn game, like the model for Sonic himself. And Sonic R was the last Sonic game that would ever release on the Sega Saturn. Later on in the development of Sonic R, this special magazine video was shown off, showing a little bit of the game. And there's like some really really hype music in the background, but that music never actually made it into the game. This music track actually just has placeholder vocals from a random Sega of Europe employee. Okay, da. Sonic R is released there's also some other interesting things. Apparently the game would have maybe had a little bit more combat in some of the racing modes. Apparently Amy's car originally had a saw blade. Yeah, a saw blade, which would have been used as a weapon. Eggman would have had bombs. And that's just like a few of the little differences. There were some other little things too, like Tails doll, which is already a terrifying existence of a character, had more stitches in the early model and had a larger white stripe apparently. This character right here isn't a flicky, but it's actually called a Lucky. <laughs> So we know Sneeko's favorite Sonic character. Over the years, Sonic the Hedgehog has actually appeared in several different musical bands. Okay, we have like the OG sound test from back in the day, which had Sonic and a couple other characters that never came back and a very early version of Vector the Crocodile, which is really cool. Now, obviously he got remodeled hardcore, but it's still interesting to see that this was his first appearance way, way, way back in the day. Sonic would also appear in Sonic Underground, the anime where he started up a band with his two siblings Manic and Sonya. What a wild time that show was. And then there was also the Sonic Live Band, which was kind of cool. Yeah, that was a slot machine. And then of course there was this Sonic dance off thing that was live action. I don't know the, all the context of this, but I do remember this being incredibly cursed. Here's a little clip of that. <laughs> In the beta files for Sonic Unleashed, there's actually a different version of the opening cutscene that shows Sonic's transformation, where it actually shows his skeleton flashing on the screen. And for whatever reason, this was ended up toned down in the final release of the game. In Sonic Generations, there are billboards for Chow in Space 2. And that's kind of cool. They advertise as like a little movie. But if you look at the names of the characters down below, Marine the Raccoon, the obscure character from Sonic Rush, adventure like she only appeared once ever and then never was brought back again does appear on this poster her name at least but they misspelled it <laughs> there's supposed to be two C's in raccoon not one in Sonic the fighters honey the cat was a character that was supposed to be in the game and was a character from another series known as fighting vipers however the character was never fully released into the game and unfortunately the character couldn't be played though some modders had found a way to get it working through the Sonic gems collection when Sonic the fighters would re-release later on on the Xbox and PlayStation Store. The character was added back into the game fully as a playable Easter egg character. And other than some comic book appearances, the character would never appear again. An interesting thing is though, this character was the only character in the game to have two different like color palettes for the character. Typically when you fight yourself in it, like it splits the character in two or something. But in this case, the character would have a not black and white version, but an alternate color scheme instead. In Sonic Lost World for the Wii U, there was a bug that would cause Sonic to have two mouths for whatever reason. After the release of Sonic Frontiers, Mario Kishimoto, the director and designer for Sonic Team, said that in future titles, specifically the follow-up game to Sonic Frontiers, which is currently untitled, will avoid having any more green hill zones or chemical plant zones due to the fact that fans have criticized the Sonic games for making us go back to those two levels over and over and over and over again. Also, if you didn't know this, Nathan Sharp or Nate 
Wants to Battle on YouTube did the vocals for one of the end credit songs in Sonic Frontiers. It's the song One Way Dream. In Sonic X, the animated television series, while the first two seasons focus on the events mostly around Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2, with a few episodes in between and before that didn't really have much to do with anything, the entire third season was just completely made up for the show. It wasn't actually based off of anything that happens in the games, though some characters did come over from the video games and were introduced, like Team Chaotix, who with Sonic Heroes releasing, they were then added in for the third season. In a G4 TV special top 100 video games of all time, Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one, was ranked at number 50. The Spanish and Italian translation present in the European manual for Sonic the Hedgehog, once again the original one, actually refers to Sonic as a porcupine, which is a silly mistake if you think about it. On the box art cover for Sonic the Hedgehog 2 in versions of the game outside of Asia, Dr. Robotnik's blue glasses appear to be more these empty black voids. It's pretty terrifying, but this might also be a reason why in the Sonic television series and in some of the comics, it portrayed this character with these black and red eyes. He also has this really random beard. Don't know where that came from. Over in Sonic Gems collection, for Sonic the Hedgehog CD, the water is actually clear instead of the standard blue. As it turns out, Sonic CD in this collection comes from the Windows 95 version of the game, which had to utilize a graphics card for the water, and the emulation software would not recreate it here for Sonic Gems collection. Originally, Knuckles the Echidna was meant to have green socks. However, they ended up having to change this to yellow socks because in some of the cutscenes where he meets up with Sonic or Tails, the coloration of the green socks would mess with stuff that was on the screen. Interestingly enough though, if you play on Sonic and Knuckles, if you're just playing as Knuckles and there's no one else on the screen, his socks will appear green again. Sonic Adventure 1 is interesting. They reuse a lot of locations for the various characters, though Sonic has the longest main story out of the five playable characters. However, there's one location in Sonic Adventure that Sonic is not playable in, which is Hot Shelter. Back over in Sonic Adventure 2, the first cutscene on the hero side of the story, you'll see that the pilot of this gun helicopter will identify himself with the call sign Sigma Alpha a 2. If you translate this to Greek, it's essentially SA2, which could be a reference to the fact the game's called Sonic Adventure 2. Pretty clever, Sega. Also in Sonic Adventure 2, the Dreamcast version of this game will run a check to make sure you're not playing on a pirated version of the game. If you are caught playing on a pirated version of the game, when you play on like the dark storyline where you start out as Dr. Eggman in his little walker, you'll just immediately fall through the surface and die. And uh, yeah, they caught you. In Sonic Heroes, there's a few interesting visual issues that pop up between versions. Typically speaking, Sonic Heroes runs the worst on the PlayStation 2 out of all the consoles that it released on, but there's a few other interesting nuanced things, like Big's character model on the PC version of the game doesn't have his stripes because of some graphical error, and Metal Madness, or the Metal Overlord, is shiny blue, or like this metallic blue, on the Xbox and PC versions of the game. However, in the GameCube and PlayStation versions of the game, he's more of just this solid standard blue. If you pay close attention to some of the details in Sonic Unleashed, you might catch something very interesting. In the town stage of Empire City, you can actually see this random person over here reading a newspaper, and if you look closely at the newspaper itself, it actually features the box art cover for Sonic 06. Wow. Sonic 06 was actually the first mainline video game in the Sonic franchise where the tornado does not actually appear. There's a really cool Super Smash Bros. fan mod called Smash Bros. Remix that recreates the gameplay of the Nintendo 64 Smash Bros, but adds in some new characters and they put Sonic in and it feels very fitting for the setting that this game originally came out in. And now we can, you know, pretend those rumors back in the day for unlocking Sonic and Smash Bros was true. There's an episode of Breaking Bad where Jesse is seen playing Sonic 06, which is pretty funny. Out of all of the little side characters in this game, 
Knuckles is the only character that isn't used to fully complete a mission. However, there is a glitch you can do to complete the stage as him. Sonic Unleashed originally was supposed to be Sonic Adventure 3, though the team working on this game ended up choosing to make the game more focused over on Sonic. However, in Japan, the game retained its original title and was instead released as Sonic Adventure World. Okay, back in the day, if a customer actually went ahead and pre-ordered a copy of Sonic Colors at GameStop, they would get a free hat that looks like Sonic. And oh my god, is that terrifying. Also, oddly enough, in this Sonic game, if you gain 100 rings, it really doesn't matter. Sonic doesn't get an extra life like he did in previous titles. Despite Sonic 06 getting critically panned after its release, the game still sold surprisingly strongly, with investor meetings reporting that the game sold better than what they had expected it to sell during that holiday season. Interestingly enough though, in 2009, Sega delisted Sonic 06 from digital stores as they felt like they didn't want to continuously tarnish the reputation of the Sonic franchise. In Sonic Lost World, there's a really interesting Sonic slash the Legend of Zelda crossover level where you get to run around in Hyrule, which is really cool. However, with the eShop officially shutting down, it makes this version of the level no longer playable unless you have a backup or you're looking into pirating services, which is definitely something we do not recommend doing. Sonic Forces was actually one of the earliest Nintendo Switch games ever announced. Originally, when Sonic Forces first showed off its trailer, it was announced that it would be coming on the Nintendo NX, which was before Nintendo even revealed the Switch. It was just letting people know whatever Nintendo was doing next, Sonic Forces would be there. There was this interesting resurgence of classic 2D Sonic, kind of in the early 2010s, when they did Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 1. Now, fortunately, Episode Episode 1 was pretty alright, and there was a lot of excitement for Episode 2. Tails was being added in, and the gameplay wasn't all that good. Now, one thing that's really interesting is when they were promoting Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 2, there were talks that if the game was deemed successful, there would likely be an Episode 3. However, the game was panned because it wasn't that good, and Episode 3 never was released or as far as we know, created. In the television series Sonic Underground, it was the last television project to feature Jaleel White voicing Sonic the Hedgehog, but in this series, he also voiced Sonic the Hedgehog's brother, Manic the Hedgehog. So there's always been a little bit of confusion around the ending of Sonic Heroes, where Team Sonic all turned super, as this kind of looks different than how their super forms would originally look in the original classic Sonic games. Like for instance, Knuckles just looks normal red, with like a bubble of energy around him rather than his like flashy pink hyper knuckles form or even like a gold knuckles that would be more consistent with like the super line. Now canonically speaking this is considered still Super Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles though it is interesting that in the Japanese guide it actually suggests that Team Sonic went into a hyper mode which is different than the standard super mode so there's still some level of confusion here because people don't know what's going on. One thing that's really interesting is that in 1992 there was actually a Sonic the Hedgehog manga, and this released before Sonic the Hedgehog 3 came out, and it introduced Charmy B for the very first time, who technically would become a mainstay character that was introduced well before Knuckles the Echidna debuted. The only characters that have this title are in order Sonic, Dr. Robotnik, Vector the Crocodile, Amy, and Tails. And yes, Vector appeared briefly in a comic book series that was released before the first game to help promote the launch of Sonic the Hedgehog. There's actually a Sonic Adventure mod where you play as Cream the Rabbit. And one thing that's really interesting about this mod is not only are all of the cutscenes fully implemented and a lot of really interesting animations made for this character, it's fully voice acted even, and then it's kind of inserted into the story as well. Like for instance, there's this whole sequence where Sonic and Tails typically fly on the tornado up to the egg carrier and Cream's just right there with it. I mean, it's a little hilarious, but hey, Cream is right there with it. Then the other interesting thing is Tails' character in this mod, after the second tornado crashes on the egg carrier because he forgot to put landing brakes, is just nowhere to be seen for the rest of the entire story. So some fans have maybe pointed out that it just means Tails died and nobody seems to even notice or care. They kind of just forgot of his
his existence. And then Cream's character kind of fills in that role of what Tails would have done in the Sonic Adventure story. Still, a very unique mod nonetheless, and we'll put a link in the description down below to a channel you can check out a playthrough of because it is pretty hilarious. Okay, in the newer live action Sonic the Hedgehog movies, we see baby Sonic. Like, he's a thing, right? But did you know in the original Sonic television series, or specifically Sonic Underground, we get to see baby Sonic there too? And oh boy, is this pretty cursed. Also, did anybody ever notice that in Sonic 06, when you do get the small parts where you play as Amy, she just gains the ability to turn invisible? Like, why hasn't that ever been addressed again in a future game? It's just something that was introduced in this game, and then they never really did anything with it ever again. I just thought that that was kind of interesting and worth noting here. There's also this weird glitch in Sonic 06 where if you go up to this random box and you do this like kick spin thing, the box will just start flying and eventually you can just like leave the planet. I always thought that was interesting. And that is it for 30 minutes of Sonic the Hedgehog pointless or useless facts that you didn't think you needed to know, but you do know now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you do subscribe with notifications on. For more videos like this, you should check out our in-depth review we did on Shadow the Hedgehog if you get some free time. It is a wild, wild game. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. That's it for today. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.